Jesus. All the praise belongs to you, King of glory. Father, it is not about us. Father, it is all about you. Father, we say this morning, have your way, Lord. Lead us and guide us. Have your way, Father, Lord my God. For by ourselves, we are not able, Father. 
for by ourselves we are not able lord jesus father lord i pray this morning i say lord although it be perhaps my voice that they hear and although it be almighty god my words that that they it sounds like it is oh god it may be me that they see but lord let it be your spirit that speaks to the church let it be your spirit oh god that speaks through me father in the name of jesus christ father i submit myself to your leadership and to your guidance i submit yourself i submit myself oh god to the move of the spirit i say father move through me and speak through me father lord strip me of all of my own wisdom my experience whatever it is that i may think that i know but father let it be your wisdom let it be you who speaks to us this morning for your children almighty god they are hungry to hear from you almighty god your children are thirsty to drink from the well of living water as father i pray almighty god that as your word goes out this morning may it go out like a double-edged sword that it is almighty god may it cut through everything may it pierce through almighty god in the name of jesus lord may your may your word bring life and light and hope almighty god to all the situations where there was no hope to all the situations where perhaps we had given up father i pray in the precious and the mighty name of jesus christ lord Lord God, that this morning is all about you. It is all for your move. It is all for your glory. Father, in the precious and the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, I submit to your leadership. I submit to your will. I submit, Almighty God, let your kingdom come. Let it be that your will, Almighty God, that it's being done. Father, Lord, my God, not mine, not what I want to say, not my will, not my desire, but yours. Father, in the precious and the mighty name of the one and the only living God, Father, I honor you. I worship you this morning. I say, Abba, Father, Holy Spirit, have your way, have your way, have your way. In Jesus' name I pray. Father, I honor you. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. In Jesus' name I pray. Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining me this morning. Um, you are just in time for our Sunday service where we just share the word of God and we share what God has been uh, speaking about and what God had laid into our heart. And children of God, wow, today that a word that I have is one like no other. God has really been speaking and he's been speaking about us understanding his move. He's been speaking us about us understanding his instructions about us being able to decipher the truth true meaning of his instructions now listen i want us to take our reading today from the book of genesis chapter 12 please do feel free to read whichever version that you are comfortable with hallelujah to god be the glory i'm reading from um a macarthur study bible it is a new king james version but please do feel free do feel free to read whichever version that you are comfortable with now mine reads as follows we're going to read from genesis chapter 12 we're going to read from verse 1 it says now the Lord had said to Abraham, get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed may the reading of the word of god be blessed now children of god i am so excited i want to jump right into it now listen to this here we find an extract from the word of god where it is god himself speaking to abraham now he is giving him a direct instruction now listen to this instruction and the format in which it is laid out now listen to this he says listen get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I want to stop right there. Now listen to this. The instruction of God is clear. He starts off by saying, I need you to get out of your country. Now, if we can look at the definition of a country, <laughs> it is a political state or a nation or a territory. But God is so clear. He wants his instruction to be so clear that he goes further than to say that even if you're out of your country, I need you to get out from your family and from your father's house. 
So for Abram to have left the country would not have been enough. Because although you can leave a country, you can still be within that family and you can still be within that father's house. Now God had to say, I need you to leave the country and to leave your family and to leave your father's house. Now I want us to, 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 to dissect this information into digestible pieces so that we can understand what God is saying to Abraham and also try to take a look at the reasoning behind what God is saying. My God, my God, Father, may the reading of your word be blessed. Now listen to this. When we are talking about a country, it's a nation, it's a territory. It is a political state that is governed by whoever is governing that specific place or that area or that land. Hmm. When God is saying, come out of your country, he is saying, come out of the governance of those who govern that land, who govern that territory so that I can govern you. So now it is a matter of governance. God was saying to Abram, yes, you belong, you belong to this land. You've been born in this land and you've been born living and following the laws that have been set by the regulatory parties of this land. But I want you to come out of that country, come out of that territory, come out of that land and come into a place where you are able to hear me, where you are able to be governed by me, where you are able to follow all under submission to what only I say and what nobody else is saying. Because the laws of this land, the laws of our countries, the laws made by these rulers and individuals of authority contradict the laws that God himself had made. God wanted to set him apart. To change his mindset, to change what he had been conditioned to believe, what he had been raised up to know as the law. God wanted to reassign new laws, to redeposit new laws within his son for the purpose of where he was taking him. Now we find this also when the word of God says in Matthew 6, when you pray, pray in this manner, let your kingdom come, let your will be done. Meaning that there is another kingdom that is there right now. But when we pray to invite the kingdom of God, we forsake the governance ha, of the kingdom that we are under right now. And we submit to the governance of the kingdom of God. Now, that is what God is saying here. He says, I want you to allow my kingdom to come and govern you. I want you to allow my kingdom to be what sets the law for you. My word has to be the standard for your life. Get out of your country. Now listen to the words that God uses. He says, get out. And when we talk about getting out, it is to escape. It is to leave a place of confinement. Now with every country, the laws that are placed in our lives are laws that are limitations. <laughs> the laws that are there for us. When they say you are not allowed to do this, you are not allowed to go there. If you are doing this, you have to do it in this way. It becomes a confinement to the move and to the action and to the leadership of the spirit of God. That is why God was saying to Abraham, I need you to get out. I need you to escape. Escape from the laws that already exist. I need you to, uh, the confinement that you have and the limitations imposed on you. They are going to limit the move of my spirit because what I want to do in your life has never been seen before. No ear has heard, no eye has seen what I want to do. Now listen, when it comes to the things of God, when God himself is moving, nothing fits into the laws that exist in this world. The laws of physics cannot explain it. The, the, the mathematical calculations cannot, the, 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 the biological clock does not, listen, nothing works. That's why God was saying to Abram, listen, I need you to, to escape from these laws of confinement. I need you to escape from the limitations that are set for you. Because I want to, I want to make you great. I want to make you 
a blessing. But I can't do that where you are because there are too many laws that limit me. There are too many laws that limit what we can do and what we cannot do. Where we can go and where we cannot go. What we can say and what we believe and what we can't believe. So God says, I need you to get out of your country. Escape that mentality. Escape the limitations that come with that. My God. Now listen to this. He then says, get out of your country, but I don't want you to stop there. He says, from your family. <laughs> now listen, 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 listen to this. When we talk of family, we talk of, of a group of, of, of people that are united by the rights or the ties of marriage or blood relation or, or, or there is some sort of a bond that exists there. That ties you. Now God says when you've gotten out of your country. When you have left the confines of the government. When you, when you have left the confines of, of, the, of, the, politic, uh, of the politicians and, and the ruling parties. When you have allowed yourself to escape the limitations that are set to you by them. Listen, when, when we speak of God. He doesn't always <laughs> enlarge your territory. Sometimes he redefines it. He moves you from one place to another another where the laws allow you to do where there's no prohibitions there is no limitations now listen he says once you've gotten out of that place where you are confined i need you to also escape the the the, the, the limitations that come by the ties and the relationships that you have because some of the relationships that we have they limit us without us even noticing it you 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 handle things you settle you stay in situations where you're not supposed to stay because of these ties because of what ties you to these people because of what bonds you to them now listen it's good and well to have relationships and, and and to have ties and all of that but be careful where they begin to limit the move of god be careful where they begin to dictate what you can do and what you cannot do where you can go and where you cannot go what you need to become depends only on what god says about you my god now listen to this Jesus himself got to a point in time where he left his own family not because they had wronged him not because he was fighting with them but so that he could fulfill what God had called him to fulfill if you go and read the book of Luke chapter 2 verse 46 and Matthew chapter 12 verse 46 you begin to see the painting that the word of God because when this calling comes into your life it's not a calling for a group of people it's not a calling for it's a calling for you. It is a personal relationship between you and your God. And nobody should be able to stand in the way of what God wants to do in your life. And, and the people that we love sometimes are the limitations. The people that we love sometimes are what draw us away. The people that we love sometimes are what keep us from doing what God wants us to do. So he says, I need you to get out. Get out, escape from the limitations. <laughs> ah, escape, escape, escape from the limitations that are imposed onto you. Then he says, from, from, from your family you need to go. And the word from, is, if you look for, for what it means and, and what it refers to, it refers to a starting point. It means whatever you were doing before at that point in time is no longer relevant because from that point of view, God wants to change and redefine you and reclassify you, give you a new name. He wants to, <laughs> he changed the name of Abraham from Abraham to Abram because there was something that God was doing. He changed the name from Abram to Abraham. Because when God wants to move in your life, he wants to redefine you. He wants to change you. But you need to escape. You need to get out and allow God to give you a new starting point. Far from those that you were relationally tied to. or you, you, God wants to do something with you. He isolates you from the crowd so that you cannot be influenced. He isolates you from the crowd so that you don't listen to any other voice other than he so that you can clearly hear what God is saying and what God is speaking into your life. 
Because those who love us tend to protect us so much so that they limit us in that love. They hinder us from moving. They hinder us from growing without even realizing it. So he says, I need you to escape. I need you to go from that. Next, he says, and from your father's house. One would think that when he talks about family, he has already included the father's house because family would be then your father's house. But listen to this. When he's talking about your father's house, when you're still in your father's house, it is your father's rules that must be. <laughs> it is your father. Whatever law that your father has set is the law that you need to follow. But God says, I don't want to move in that way. I need to become your father. I need to be the one that sets the law for you. So he isolates you. He removes you from everything that you are familiar with. From everything that you are comfortable with. From everything that you love. From everything that you want to be close to. So that he can show you what he wants to do in your life. So that he can move in your life like never before. So that he can define himself. Ah, so that he can introduce you to you. Because you haven't met who you are. You haven't met who you really are. You don't don't know what you are really capable of. You only know what everyone else has allowed you to believe. You only know what is, your community has told you you can become, you can be, you can do. But God says that's not what I have told you. I have redefined, I've broken the boundaries and I am redefining, I'm reclassifying you. But I need you to get out. I need you to move from. I need you, I need you, I need you to let go. Of everything and everyone so that you are able to hear me so that you are able to be led and guided by me there comes a point in time in your life they say that the bed leaves the nest but God is not talking about no nest he's talking about everything and everyone that love you they look like they're protecting and shielding and loving you but they are hey, they are hindering your growth they are limiting you they have put a cap on you so so that you don't reach your full potential and you don't even realize it because it's in the name of love listen the things of god are not calculated one plus one does not equals two in the kingdom of god look at how they multiplied the fish <laughs> look at how they multiplied the other uh, loaves of bread there is no law that governs the spiritual world that's why god says when you pray you have to say let your kingdom come into my life because the kingdom of god does not operate like the physical realm physical people do not understand spiritual things it does not make them evil. But for as long as they are not spiritual, they do not understand the secrets and the methodologies of God. How God speaks, how God moves, how God directs, how God guides. You need to be spiritual in order to understand it. A physical man cannot understand it. That's why the word of God says that those who worship me must be in spirit. You cannot access certain things for as long as you are physical. There are realms, there, there are levels you cannot get to. That's why God said to Abraham, Abraham, I have called you. There is something I want to do in your life, but you need to get out. You need to escape. You need to leave. Because for as long as you are where you are, I cannot use you. For as long as you are where you are, I cannot, I, I don't have the freedom to, to rule in your life. I don't have soul, I don't have the soul mandate to do what I need to do with you, to do what I need to do with your family. I don't have that soul mandate. That's why he says, I need you to, I, I, I need you to, I need you to, I need you to move. Get out. And he gives a promise. He gives a promise that is attached to obedience to his instruction. He says, if you can get out of this country, if you can escape these confinement, these limitations, if you can, if you can move 
go from your family and allow me to give you a new starting point if if you can leave your father's house and the laws that you learned there allow me to become your father allow me to give you new laws he says then i will make you a great nation and i will bless you i will make your name great and you shall be a blessing he says i will even bless those who bless you i will even kiss those who kiss you and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed because you shall be the salt of the earth you shall be the light you shall listen a city on a hill cannot be hidden now that is what he says if you can listen if you can trust if you can obey then i will then i will then i will then i will have no choice but to then i then i will i will bless you i, 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 I will walk with you i will make your name great i shall be your god you shall be my people but that is as a result of obedience to what i say because obedience comes with trust you don't obey someone you don't trust because when God is saying let go when God is saying walk away when God is saying let me he is saying trust me that I will never tell you to let go of something that I will not replace I will not tell you how to let go I will never direct you into a place where I have not provided the resources children of God there is great reward in obedience to God there is great reward in submission to God there is great reward God will never ever ask you to let go or to sacrifice or to leave something and leave you out in the air to dry he will always make provision he will always provide the resources he will give you the finance he will give you the stamina he will encourage you he will motivate you he will assign destiny helpers he's not going to tell you to do something then leave you alone to do it by yourself he's not gonna send you somewhere and stand far off without walking with you this is the kind of god that we serve if he says go he is going with you he's going before you if he says leave he is replacing his ah uh, he's restoring he will never take something away from you just to harm you for all things work together for good when God is saying, I need you, it's time for you to stop right here. I need you to turn. I need you to stop this job. I need you to leave this family. I need you to leave this relationship. I need you to let go of this. When God said, when God said to Abraham, when God said, come and sacrifice your son, he knew what his son meant to him. He knew what he would gain as a reward. God will never ask you to give him more than you can. He will never ask you to give you something that he has not already planned how he will multiply it in your life. When God says, let go, let go. When God says, move, move. When God says, do, do. His will will never take you where his grace will not carry you. He is not here to harm you. His plans are to give you a hope and a future. Allow his kingdom to come into your life. Allow his kingdom to come and rule in your life. 
and you will see him begin to align everything. He will align your path. He will remove the stumbling blocks and he will add the things that will help you to get to where you need to be even quicker. God says, if you can just obey me, if you can just trust me, when I say walk on the waters, it's because I know that I have given you the ability to walk on the waters. When I say move, it's because I know that I have made a provision for you. I will never ask you to do something that I have not already given you the strength, the courage, the determination, the wisdom, the ability. I have already provided for you. I have already prepared the way. I have already made sure that when you need finances, they will be there. When you need support, it will be there. When you, everything will always be ready for you. If you can just trust me. I don't know what it is that God has spoken into your life. But this is what God was saying to Abraham. And I know that a lot of us are in the same place where God is telling you to move away from things that you love so much and that you're so comfortable with. But they are holding you back. They are hindering you from doing what God has sent you to do. They are delaying you from fulfilling your purpose. It is time for you to let go. It is for you to, it's time for you to trust God. Be like Peter and walk on the waters. God will never ever leave you nor forsake you. Remember all of creation. They react to his word. They respond to his word. They act upon his instruction. So everything around you <coughs> is governed by this God. God will never ever ask you to give of yourself more than <coughs> you need to. And it is time for us to do what Abraham did, we read in verse 4 that the word of God says, Immediately Abraham departed, just as the Lord had spoken to him. Children of God, this is at a point in time where the word of God was still new. God himself, the whole idea and the concept of God was still new. He had to trust something he didn't even know. He had to trust someone he had never seen. He had just only heard from. But look at his trust. Look at the way that Abraham trusted. He trusted God and he obeyed. The word of God says he, he left and when he left, Lot left with him. But Lot, his brother's son, was never supposed to live with him because the instruction was this. Go out from your family. But we, we like to take things and people along with us that were never meant to go with us. We like to pull them. We like to drag them with us. But we, we forget that this is for our own comfort. This is for our own assurance. It is not part of the instruction that God had given us. God said, go and leave behind. Let go of your family. Let go of your country. Leave your father's house. But Abraham, he took a long Lot, now listen as the word of God continues, Lot comes to a point in time where he can no longer stay with Abraham or he leaves because he was never supposed to go along. He was never part of the instruction. We like to bring along with us. We like to drag along with us people that we should have left. When God is calling you, it is between you and your God and no one else. So no one else is going to understand it. It's not going to make sense to anyone else because the instruction, the vision has been shown to you and to you alone. That is why the word of God was clear. He said, Abraham, get out of your country. Go from your family. Leave, leave, leave your father's house. But we like to bring items of comfort. We love to bring along this person and that one. But what they are doing is, they are, yeah, 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 yeah. So God ended up separating them anyway because his instruction from the beginning was clear i have called you not you and your friend not you and your sister not you 
and your cousin. I have called you and you and I need you alone. Now we bring along all of these things and they become a burden to us as we walk. Now there are problems on the way because they don't understand the vision. Now there are problems on the way because we have brought along people that we should have never come along with. Now there are problems because we have taken along with us individuals that belong in our past. We have dragged with us to the future. Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. It is time for us to let go. It's time to leave that country. It's time to leave that family, that father's house. It is time for us to go to a land that God is showing us. You know the visions that God has been showing you. You know the word that God has spoken into your life. You know the instruction. You know and you know you've tried to ignore it, but you know what God has been saying. You need to take that leap of faith. You need to trust God. Let go of everything and everyone. It's not everyone that has been coming with you, that needs to go with you. There are times where you need to be separated. Even when Jesus Christ, when it was almost time for him to be crucified, he separated himself from everyone else and went a little further. We also need to learn the art of separating ourselves from everyone else and going a little further. We need to learn the art of knowing where do we walk with people and where do we walk by ourselves. We need to master that art and to learn to cut off people and things that are delayed laying us they are hindering us they are crowding the voice of god so much so that you don't even know what god had said in the beginning learn the art of cutting off people learn the art of separating yourself allow yourself to be isolated alone with your god so that his instruction to you is clear it is undiluted it is it is not clouded it's not crowded you need to learn the art of leaving them behind and going just a little further by yourself. Know that even though they say they are praying with and for you, it is not guaranteed. Some of them are willing but their bodies are tired. They end up ah, da, 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 da. you need to learn the art of separating yourself. You need to learn the art of going a little further all by yourself. One and two, you and God, that's all you need. Don't you know that three is a crowd? Don't you know that three is a crowd? This is between you and your God. Learn the art of cutting off. Don't be like Abraham who went with Lot and ended up getting separated anyways. Leave what you need to leave behind. Leave what you... Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't take anything or anyone with you. The calling is for you and for you alone. The calling is not for you and for your friends. The calling is not... Listen, listen, it is just for you. God will send you appropriate destiny helpers that will help you to do what you need to do. That will help you to fulfill the will of God. Because God... <laughs> God is not a man that he should lie. If he has spoken it, it must, ah, his word must, might must prosper for which God has sent it to prosper. All you need to do is understand that you can't take all of your friends with you. You can't take all of your family members with you. You can't take all of your church members. Listen, you can't take anyone with you. That is why the instruction was clear. I want to make you, Abram, into a great nation. I want to pick your name up. I want to bless you like never before. But I need you to start by letting go of everything. Rip yourself of everything that has been hindering you and confining you and limiting you. You are greater than this. You are better than this. You can reach further than this. You can do better than this. But you can't do it as long as you are holding on to your fire. You cannot. You need to be alone. They are crowding my voice. You need to be alone there. They are planting the seeds of doubt. Yes, it may be out of love, but what happens at the end of the day is they are limiting you. They are hindering you. They are delaying you. Master the art of cutting off people. Master the art of isolating yourself. Yes, they will talk. Yes, 
I guess they spoke about Abraham. Yes, they will speak about you too. But we don't care about who says what. We only care about the king of kings. We care about the one who is giving you the instruction in the first place. Master the art of cutting off what you need to cut off. Letting go. Stop holding on to relationships that you can see you are just forcing. Stop holding on to things that you can see. They are holding you back. They are limiting you. They can't see the vision because it was not shown to them. They don't understand the dream because it was not shown to them. They do not understand it because it was never revealed to them. It was never theirs in the first place. It was always yours. Today we sing Father Abraham had many sons, many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them and so are you because he was obedient to the word of God. He would never have gotten to where he was if he disobeyed the word of God. Obedience is rewarding. Obedience is rewarding. You need to let go. <laughs> you need to let go of whatever you're holding on to. It's natural to feel fear because it's a new area that God is asking you to enter in. I can imagine Abraham. <laughs> The word of God says he was 75 years old when he departed from his home. Imagine someone who had grown up in that land with those friends, with that family, in that country. For 75 years, he knew <laughs> everything. He was so comfortable with the laws. He had made so many acquaintances. There was so much that he had built in those 75 years. And yet God said, leave it behind leave that thing behind imagine the bravery imagine the courage imagine the level of submission and surrendering that abraham needed to have in order to let go imagine just imagine how much bravery how much courage how much obedience he would need to have in order to just let go. Seventy-five years. <clears throat> Some of us will not even live to that age. But Abraham lived to seventy-five. And at seventy-five, God speaks to him and he says, I need you to leave everything behind. Imagine Imagine what he must have gone through to trust God. He said, God, I've been working at this company for so long. I have even developed this and that, and I'm just about to get promoted. And God says, let it go. Leave everything. 75 years. Lord, I've been living in this house for for 75 years, I've, been, I've, I've lived in this house for so long. I've invested my time. I've invested, my, Lord, I've been in this friendship for so long. I've invested my time. I've invested my effort. I, Lord, I can, it says, uh, Abraham left at 75 years to go and listen to what God told him to do. What about you and I? God is speaking this morning and he's saying, if Abraham can be obedient and let go of what he was holding on to for 75 years, what about you and me? These things are limiting the move of God. These things are limiting the growth that we, he's limiting where we are supposed to be. Some of us should have been further. But because we are still holding on and disobedience is directly doubting God. God has been saying, I need you to move. I, I, I want to do something with you. I want to make your name great. I, I want to bless you. I want to multiply the works of your hands. But you're still 
holding on you are still in this toxic relationship some of them are not harming you but they are hindering you from growing some of them are not necessarily harming you but they are confining the move of the spirit of god in your life <coughs> I just want to take this moment, this opportunity <clears throat> to pray, to encourage you. Don't be afraid. If God is sending you out, he is going before you. If God is sending you out, he is going before you. Don't be afraid. God will never, ever, ever, his will will never take you where his grace will not carry you. But also remember that his grace will not carry you where his will did not take you. Oftentimes, we do things outside the will of God, disobeying his direct instruction and thereby suffer the consequences because we went where his will did not send us. And because we went where his will did not send us, we struggle all by ourselves because his grace is not carrying us. So either way, you need to be careful about the choices you make. Either way, you need to be extra careful about the relationship that you allow to exist in your space. Either way, you have to be careful because if it is not in God's will, his grace is not carrying you. I just want to pray with you. I do not know what it is that God has laid upon your heart. I don't know what it is that God has told you to leave behind and yet you're still holding on to it. I don't know what it is that God has spoken into your life that you're so afraid of letting go of. But today I encourage you. I encourage you through the reading of the word of God that it is time to get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that god is showing you it is time because god wants to make you a great nation god wants to bless you god wants to make your name great and he wants to make you a blessing he wants to bless those who bless you and to curse those who curse you but you need to submit you need to obey to his instruction, let us pray. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, Father, as your word has come out, we accept it, almighty oh, God, Father, we accept this word that we have received, and Lord, my God, to us it is a wake-up call to say, but God has been speaking, he has directed, he has instructed, and yet we have not obeyed. Oh, right now is the time for us to do what God has sent us to do. It is the time for us to allow your kingdom oh god to come and rule in our lives it is time for us right now almighty god to submit to your leadership to submit to your will almighty god father we give ourselves to you we say lead us by your spirit help us give us helpful knowledge wisdom and understanding father give us the bravery and the courage to let go of all these things that are keeping us in confinement for one reason or another they may not be hard us but they are hindering us they may not be harming us but they're delaying us almighty god i pray in the name of jesus father lord my god in everything have your way let your let your will overtake our will let your will override our will and our desire in jesus precious and mighty name father we glorify you we thank you for your word we thank you for your life-changing word. We thank you for your word that is like no other. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Today happens to be um, one of the Sundays where we're going to partake in Holy Communion. The word of God encourages us to remember 
what Jesus Christ did for us on that cross by partaking in Holy Communion. And I want us to do this today in support to the word that God has just spoken to us about letting go. And let us just use this as an opportunity to remember what Jesus Christ himself sacrificed on that cross. He also had to let go. He said in his prayer that, Lord, not my will, but your will. He said, if it was me, I would let this cup pass me by. But he says, not my will, but your will, because he understood that we have things that we desire. We have our own will, but there is a time and we have to put that will aside and to say, Lord God, whatever it is that you will, whatever it is that you desire, whatever it is, oh God, that you want to do in my life, I accept your cross. I carry it and I follow you and I follow in the footsteps that you have set for me. We need to set aside ourselves in our will and allow God and his will to take precedence in our life. And as we partake in Holy Communion this morning, it is my prayer that we teach ourselves to live a lifestyle of humility and submission where we always say to God, not my will, but your will, oh God. Not my will, but your will, O oh God. At your word, I will go. At your word, I will say it. At your word, I will do it. Now what we have before us is the body of Christ. We have his flesh and we have his blood. And... In taking and accepting the word that God has spoken into our hearts this morning. We remember the sacrifice. That God loved us so much. That he gave his only begotten son. So that you and I can have life. And we can have life in abundance. We partake this day. In the Holy Communion, in remembrance that Jesus paid the price, that it is because of Him that our sins have been paid for, our debt has been paid for. We don't owe anything anymore because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. Let us take part in remembering Thank you, Father. Thank you for your blood. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross. As we drink and as we eat in remembrance of what you have done for us, the sacrifices that you made, you overcame your fear and you allowed yourself to go through so much pain for us, just for us. We see the manner of love 
that you have for us. A love that is self-sacrificing, that thinks more of others than itself, that endures pain even though undeserved because of love. Father, Lord God, we honor you. We honor you and we do not take for granted what was done for us. The price, the hefty price that we could not even afford to pay. Father, we honor you. We worship you and we glorify you. To God be the glory. I'm grateful for the blood of Jesus. Jesus, I am grateful for the blood of Jesus. I am grateful for the blood of Jesus. It washes whiter than the snow i am grateful for the blood of jesus i am grateful for the blood of jesus I am grateful for the blood of Jesus. It washes whiter than the snow. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We are grateful for the blood of Jesus. We are grateful for the word of God. Let us take upon ourselves the courage and the bravery. Let us take upon ourselves the will to always submit and to carry out the instructions that are laid out by God in his word for us. If God speaks to you about doing something, don't think twice, don't think three times. Cut off everyone and everything in your decision and act upon the word that God himself has placed in your heart. There is a great reward for obedience. There is a great reward for obedience. Now, before I can leave and I mean love and leave you, guys, if you have not yet gotten yourself a copy of my novel from the view of a preacher's kid, I'll just try and make it extra clear for you so you can see it. You can get this book. Guys, this is a life-changing book. It is not a book like any other. It is actually a very interesting um, bibliography of my own life. Um, I'm a preacher's kid and I just wrote about my experiences. I mean, I've I've had a child out of wedlock. I'm an orphan, lost my parents at a young age. Um, a lot of things have happened in my life that I think would bring so much, so much, so much help to you. Um, if you can get yourself a copy, you can get it on Amazon. Take a lot. Barnes and Noble, the book depository, and hey, it is internationally available, so get yourself a copy. Now, before I leave, the I, I believe that the Spirit of God has just laid something on my heart just before I leave. If you have not yet accepted Christ as your personal Savior, if you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ, I want to take this opportunity to extend that invitation to you. The Word of God says that the devil or the enemy has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But God has come so that we may have life and have that life in abundance. Um, if you have felt the move or you have felt the desire to know this God more and to, you, to grow personally and to grow that personal relationship between you and God, um, I would like to do so and walk you through that personally. I don't believe in a once-off prayer 
and thinking that it is done i don't believe in leading you to christ through prayer i want to help you step by step so just leave me a dm leave me a message you can even drop it in the comment box below um i will definitely get in touch with you so that i can walk you in through that path and explain to you what it entails what it's about and you know it, it would be one of the best decisions that you can make in your entire lifetime it is the one and the only best best decision that you can make once again thank you so much for giving me your precious time and for joining me as we spoke and shared and expounded on the word of god i hope that you are encouraged because i definitely am i love you i love you i love you see you next week same time same place but of course greater anointing love you